Number 45. Calculate the molar mass of each of the following. Okay, so we've done, I think, three questions just like this one. So if this is your first time here, and if you want a full more in-depth explanation, go back to, I think, starting question number 42. Um, this one is just going to be a much quicker pace because I'm assuming that you guys have already done those questions. All right, so just know that, you know, to find a molar mass, you just need to sum up your individual element masses, right? So that's what a molar mass is. It's the sum of all your individual element masses. So we're going to be adding together everything at the end. You should know that we need to definitely use a periodic table, PT, for this. So get out your periodic table. I put one down at the bottom for you guys. So we're definitely going to use that. And just know that molar mass, mm, molar mass is always in units of grams per mole. All right? So it's always the number that you get when you add everything up per one mole. All right. So let's start it off. So letter A, it says the anesthetic halothane C2HBrClF3. So many halogens, but nonetheless, we got to do it, right? So C2HBrClF3, right? Yeah, okay. So how many different elements are here? Well, we have carbon, right? We have hydrogen, bromine, chlorine, and fluorine. So there's five different elements here. So I'm just going to say one, two, three, four, five. So we have carbon, hydrogen, bromine, chlorine, and fluorine. How many carbons do we have? We have two of them, right? There's C2. So this two goes with the carbon. So there's two here. Hydrogen, there's a secret one here. So that's one hydrogen. Bromine, there's one here, so there's one bromine. Chlorine, there's one here, so there's one chlorine. But then there's three fluorines, so there's three of these. And now we always times by the molar mass that you see on the periodic table for that individual element. So carbon is right here. It's 12.01, so 2 times 12.01 is 24.02. Hydrogen is up top here, 1.008. So this would be the same number, 1.008. Bromine is all the way down here. 79.90 is the mass number, so 79.90. So 1 times 79.90 is obviously 79.90. Chlorine is right above bromine. It's also another halogen, so 35.45. So 1 times 35.45 is 35.45. And then fluorine is right above chlorine. We're getting all the halogens in this one. And each fluorine is 19.00. So 3 times 19 is 57. Okay. And now the molar mass, you're just summing up your individual elements. So it would be... This plus this plus this plus this plus this. You all add them up. So let's get to it. We got 24.02 plus 1.008 plus 79.90 plus 35.45 plus 57. So you get 197.378. So this would be 197.378 grams per mole box that answer off. That's the answer to the first one. Okay, for B, let's see. Now these are getting crazy, so I might as well just erase this and we'll start fresh because there is, there's a lot of elements here, so I want to just make sure I have enough room. Okay, so for B, we want the herbicide paraquat, which is C12H14N2Cl2. So c 12 h 14 N2, Cl2. How many different elements are here? There's four, right? There's carbon, there's hydrogen, there's nitrogen, and there's chlorine. Now we just got to figure out how many of each we have. So there was 12 carbons, so that's a 12. 
there was 14 hydrogen, so that's a 14. There's two nitrogen, and there's two chlorines. And now we just times them by their masses. Carbon we know from before is 12.01. So when you do now 12 times 12.01, you get 144, 144.12. Hydrogen we know from before is 1.008. So 14 times 1.008, you get 14.112. Nitrogen is right next to carbon. It's right here. So that's 14.01, so this would be 28.02. And then chlorine, we know from before, is 35.45. So 2 times 35.45 is 70.9. Okay, we found out the individual parts, so now we just got to add them all up. So this plus this plus this plus this, we add them all up. So 144.12 plus 14.112 plus 28.02 plus 70.9, you get 257.152. And that's the answer to the second one. Your molar mass for this compound is 257.152 grams per mole. That one is checked off. We are good to go with that one. Next. Just erasing it for a little bit. We got caffeine, which is that compound in coffee that makes you, you know, more alert. Caffeine is good. I need some. After, after this question, maybe I'll get some, some coffee. Why am I writing caffeine? See, I, I need it. C, C8H10N4O2. That is this compound right here. How many different elements do we have? Can you see it? There's four, right? There's carbon, there's hydrogen, there's nitrogen, and then there's oxygen. Now we just got to find out how many of each do we have. So for carbon, how many do we have? We have eight. Hydrogen, there's 10. Nitrogen, there's four. Oxygen, there's two. Now we times it by what the mass is on the periodic table. So carbon we know is 12.01. So when we do 8 times 12.01, you get 96.08. Hydrogen we know is 1.008. So 10 times 1.008 is 10.08. Nitrogen we know from before is 14. 0 0.01, so 4 times 14.01 is 56.04, and then oxygen is right next to nitrogen, and that is this guy right here, that's the 16, so this would be 32. Okay, so now, what do we do? We have the sum of the parts, so we got to add them all up, so this, plus this, plus this, plus this, all addition. So 96.08 plus 10.08 plus 56.04 plus 32, you get 194.2. So this would be 194.2, we'll just say 0 0.20 grams per mole. Check that one off. That's the answer for C. We're on a roll, guys. D. A lot of elements here. Okay. D. Urea. So this is a compound that you excrete out when you go number one to the bathroom. Urea is toxic. That's why we have to get rid of it. So CO, NH2, 2. How many different elements do we have here? We have four different elements. We have carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. Now we got to figure out how many of each do we have. This is probably the hardest part, getting these numbers right. So how many carbons do we have? Well, I see a secret one here. So that represents that I have one carbon. Whoop. One carbon. How many oxygens? There's just a one here. So that tells me I have one oxygen. 
But now for nitrogen, I see that I have a two outside and a one in here. This two tells me that everything that's in the parentheses will be distributed, which will be multiplied by two. So technically it's literally one times the two, one times the two. So you have two nitrogens. And then for hydrogen, you have two in the parentheses, but two outside, two times two is four. Now we just gotta get the numbers. So carbon we know from before is 12.01, so this would be 12.01. Oxygen we know is 16.00, so 16.00. Nitrogen is 14.01, so that's 28.02. And then hydrogen is 1.008, so four times 1.008, you get four. 0.032. We're done with that. Now we just need to sum them all up. So we just got to add them, right? This plus this plus this plus this. I'll add them up and then you get your answer. 12.01 plus 16 plus 28.02 plus 4.032. You get 60.062 and that goes here. 60.062 Hold on a second, 60.062 grams per mole. Cool. Last one, a typical soap. <laughs> typical. So let's get that one down. Okay, so last one, we got E, a typical soap of C17H35. C, O, 2, N, A. How many different elements are here? There are carbon, and don't forget, there's a carbon here. So there's actually four different elements, right? There's carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and sodium. Now we just gotta figure out how many of each do we have. So there were 17 carbon here, but there was only one here, right? So don't forget that there was 17 here and one here. So 17 plus one is 18 carbon. Hydrogen, they told us was 35. Oxygen was two. And sodium, there's a one here. So one. Now we just gotta multiply. So carbon we know was 12.01. So 18 times 12.01 is 216. Point one eight hydrogen. There's 1.008. 35 point times 1.008. 35.28. Oxygen. There was 16. So this is 32. And then sodium. We now know sodium is two below hydrogen. It's right here. So 22.99, so that's just 22.99. And now we just gotta sum them all up. So this plus this plus this plus this, we add them all up to get our final answer. 216.18 plus 35.28 plus 32 plus 22.99. We get 306.45. So 306. 0.45 grams per mole. Box that answer off. That's the answer to those. All right, guys. So hopefully by now you are very fluent with how to find molar masses. This concept will carry over into so many different concept, uh, chapters. So make sure you guys know this. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for staying to the end. I hope this helped you out. If it did, click the like button. Tell us down in the comments. We love to hear from you guys. I'll respond back to you when I can. And if you guys wouldn't mind helping us out by clicking the subscribe button, just gets the word out to other people, uh, you know, other students and other, yeah, other students that want to learn sciences, whether they're in school or whether they're doing it for fun. So I thank you for that. I will see you guys all in the next question. Have an awesome day.